So our Oxy4 is now built. If you guys haven't watched the time-lapse build video, please go ahead and check that out if you'd like. It's about 20 to 30 minutes, so do set along some time to watch that video. Um, but yeah, we're, we're all built here. Um, our Oxy4 is ready to go. And a lot of you guys I know will be curious as to how it compares to the Oxy3 in size. So I have an Oxy3 here for you to compare against the size. So first off, we've got the overall length. And I'm going to do it from the end of the skid on each heli so you guys can see the, uh, the length difference here. Now the height as well, we've got, it's hard to show on the video here, I can almost get my hands you know, between the blades, top and bottom. I am going up a little bit here. Um, so it's a little bit taller, as you can imagine, much longer. And keep in mind, this is the 325 size um, Oxy4. You can stretch it again further to 360. And here they are um, side by side. Top to bottom, I should say. Let's see if I can get you guys a good shot here. So here's how they compare that way. Um, height, I guess I could go like this. And compare. Lift them up a little bit here. So yeah, that's, uh, that's about the size differences here. So we're gonna go ahead and set this guy out of the way. So the Oxy4, uh, build thoughts. As you know, if you've built the Oxy helis before, whether it's the 3, the 3 Tariq, or the Oxy2, they go together fantastically. Very little issues, if any, out of the build. They knock it out of the park with the quality. Everything goes together buttery smooth, as you'd expect if you know or if you built an Oxy4 before. If you haven't, they go together extremely well and extremely quick. I have a lot of build experience. Um, this took me from the box of nothing to bare bones frame about two hours, a uh, little less than two hours. So it's really quick for me. Um, you guys may take a little longer to enjoy your build. Um, I blow through it, but I'm very detailed and you know everything gets threadlocked, etc. during that build. So two hours for me, not including electronics. The electronics took about another hour and a half to two hours to plan the wiring, to mount the servos, mount the gyro, ESC, do some soldering, etc. Um, so if you were really set on getting it built quickly, you could probably do it in about six hours, and that's really fast for, for a 450. Um, if you're really meticulous and you want to take your time in a joint, then obviously eight hours or more just depends on your guys' schedule. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and take the canopy off and uh, give you guys a look at the inside. So for my setup, in order to get this thing flying, test it out for you guys, we are running, um, I guess you could say like a budget setup, if you will, but I don't want to use the word budget because the electronics work really well. It's not like we're sacrificing a lot of performance by using lower price components. <laughs> But at the same time, I feel like these components that we picked out are very similar to the components that the majority of you guys will pick out. So for the cyclic servos, we have KST 215s. For the tail servo, we have the KST X15 755X. The motor, we are using the Align 460MX 1800 kV. This is for six cell. They are other motors from a line that will work for three cell or four cell application, as well as Scorpion and Xnova will work as well. Xnova, however, will only work with six cell due to the KV options. And finally, for the ESC, we're using the Hobbywing 60 amp V4. I like going a little bit larger than what I need personally for ESCs to ensure that it just lasts forever and doesn't ever give me any problems. I honestly could probably get away with a 40 amp, but I wanted the peace of mind. 
Now, we are going to also do an overview of electronics in different setups and different options that you guys may want to use. That video will be available at a later date. So go ahead and take a look for that at the time of the release for these videos as we are trying to pump out all of the videos at the same time for the Oxy4. Final thoughts on the Oxy4. It's a fantastic helicopter. I'm very impressed with this. My last 450 size heli that I had was a T-Rex 450 Pro or Pro DFC. And that's a really old design um, at this point in 2017, late 2017. That model came out in 2010, 2011 maybe. So we can't really compare it, you know, tick for tack as to, you know, the design features of the T-Rex versus the de design features of the Oxy. Um, the Oxy went ahead and did a six millimeter main shaft, four millimeter spindle shaft, four millimeter tail rotor shaft, the typical oval boom design, which is actually really durable for a crash. I think due to the flat side profile, it's more resilient to bending. Obviously every crash is different, so if you bend a boom, you bend a boom. You may get lucky and you know use the same boom once, twice, three times in a crash. Every crash is different, so you know your results will vary. Um, the main gear system is actually really free. The one-way bearing that they used is perfect for the size. It's, it's honestly almost oversized, so that's, that's great. They uh, designed for insane amounts of power. The Jesus bolt in the main gear is actually very unique, and I was, uh, I'd never seen this design before. So they have a standard two millimeter screw in one side, and on the opposite side, they have like a coupler, I guess you could say, which is, I believe, three millimeters in outside diameter. And it's threaded on the inside to capture the two millimeter screw. Um, both of these parts, you will use a hex wrench to tighten against each other to make it easier. And I believe they did this due to the fact that if you used a two and a half or even a three millimeter bolt, the shank portion of that bolt is very hard to get the correct length that your application may need. Whereas by machining a, uh, a shoulder, if you will, that it has a hex at the end of it, you have the shoulder length that you specifically need for your application, and the screw just captures it, keeps it in place. So that's, that's awesome, that's really cool, very unique feature. The tail pulley is two or three pieces. Um, you have the plastic belt pulley itself, and then you have a carbon fiber um, top piece on it, that's really neat. It all mates together really nice, really nicely with the, um, the one-way bearing system. The landing gear is two-piece design. You have a left and a right. And by loosening these three bolts on each side, you can quickly drop the landing gear out and replace it as needed after a crash or a hard landing or anything like that. Um, so that's a really nice design. That came from the Oxy too. Um, the servo layout is very similar to the Oxy-3, if not identical. It will look very familiar to those who have an Oxy-3. The bearing block shape is a little bit different, and, and that may change um, during final production. Uh, I'm, I'm not certain yet, so it may be different by the time you guys have the kits in your hands. And I really like the, the layout. I built the Oxy-3 before. I know how to route the wires. The, the wires routed super simple, very nicely. They laid down, you know, on top of each other to make it super easy and super quick to do. The um, the little channels here on each side, on the left and the right side, are actually oversized for the servo plugs in the wires. So it makes it really easy just to pass through the wires um, without having to like loosen the frame and give yourself more room to slide the wires down, then tighten the frame back together and get your boom tension, or your belt tension um, set again. So they, they thought of that really well and it worked out perfectly. We're using the V-Bar Neo, um, very similar to the Brain 2 or the Icon 2 in size. Um, I don't have a whole lot of wires dangling down or anything like that. I, I routed them pretty nicely. They include zip tie holes here on the frame, one on each side. 
and I kind of like sandwich the wires on top of each other and use a zip tie to capture that onto the frame. And then the excess I kept sandwiched together and zip tied it outside of the frame just to keep them you know, nice and neat inside so that they're not going up into the main gear or the belt or anything like that. They're staying out of harm's way. Um, so overall, very impressed with the build. The flight characteristics of this heli are fantastic. From 3,000 RPM to 3,600 RPM, this thing is fun to fly. 3,000 will be perfect for the sport pilots looking to get more flight time or if you're just wanting to cruise around and have a very low stress, you know, enjoyable flight, that's perfect. You can lock in, you know, all of your flights without an issue at the low head speed, whether you're doing flips, rolls, inverted circuits, upright circuits, even mild 3D, you can get it done. It's just going to be a little bit slower. Uh, things get interesting here when you go up to 3600 RPM. We're running the 15 tooth pinion with this, so that's how we're able to achieve 3600 RPM. The thing is just an animal. In hurricanes, it hauls butt probably 40 or 50 miles an hour, if not more. It, it's mentally, mental fast, however fast it is. I, I'm very, very surprised. The tail on this heli, thanks to the special mechanical game that they designed into it, this thing holds like there's no tomorrow. I was very surprised. Usually on the smaller tail, you kind of have to sacrifice a little bit of um, flight style, if you will. You can't really push the tail a whole lot, otherwise it'll kind of get soft or blow out or you know something like that. It just ma doesn't make you feel confident pushing it that hard for the level of flying that I do. The Oxy-4, no question. I don't even have to worry about it. They did a really good job designing the tail mechanics here. The gains are perfect for the V-Bar. We're running about 65 on the gain. The limits are exactly matched um, on the V-Bar settings. They're like 110 on each side, so that's perfect. I, I'm really, really impressed with what they've done here. Now, I don't know if it's more of the mechanics or more of the mini size servo. I believe it's probably 85 to 90% of the tail mechanics because in talking with the, the designer, Luca, he says that the mini, or excuse me, the micro servo, like the KST215, um, will work just fine. I opted for the larger one just because that's kind of what I'm used to and what we used before in the older 450s. So that's it, guys. The, uh, the Oxy4 is here. I hope you guys enjoy your kits. Give us a like on the video if you enjoyed this. Share your comments about the video, about the heli, about Oxy in general and enjoy your Oxy 4.